If you've ever played games for any length of time, you can appreciate for exactly how easy it is to lose hours into that kind of an experience. And that's had me thinking about something for quite some time now that with how much of an investment of your time that you have to put into any video game, especially if you're playing something like an RPG or an MMO, which requires a, a pretty sizable investment to make it worth your while and to make your character good enough to enjoy the full breadth of the experience that's presented to you, is it a wise use of time? There's certainly the entertainment value, the escapism, and the enjoyment of taking part in a story, and in the case of, say, an MMO, perhaps the opportunity to be a part of something bigger. And actually, that's a topic I think I should talk about another time, because it's very fulfilling in any sense, even outside of games, to feel like you're a part of something larger than yourself and that your investment of time contributes to something greater. Beyond your involvement, you have put yourself into something that is just huge and you got to be a part of it. We'll talk about that another time. In this particular case, my thought was okay. For whatever game you're playing and the amount of time that you've invested into it, are you getting the most out of it? There's the experience, the enjoyment, the story, and then when you meet up with friends, the discussions you can have, the ideas you share, the thoughts and the themes, and of course the funny stories of, oh well, let me tell you something, I was on my way to Diamond City in Fallout 4, and all of a sudden this mutant comes back bashing out of this alley and he's got a bomb in his hands and the story goes from there and you both chuckle and laugh and the other guy goes oh let me tell you about the time a death claw threw a car at me that kind of thing almost like the same way uh, some people will talk about say um sports or you know things that happen in the real world which is a very fun place too with a lot less death claws and fewer super mutants i hope but in regards to uh this topic the idea of the investment you make of your own personal time and what you get out of it beyond those aspects, I was wondering about, you know, transferable skills. It kind of ties in with a conversation I had with my friend Andrew a little while ago about a book he was reading, no, listening to, it was an audiobook. And I'm trying to remember the name of it now. I think it was called Awaken Online, and it kind of has a sword art feel to it. But basically, the idea was an online MMO that's virtual reality. But the skills that you can utilize in the game, like, for example, fencing. If you practice that in the game, you came out into the real world, those skills would transfer over. Like, physically, you wouldn't have the strength that your character might have in the game. But in terms of muscle memory of how to use a fencing sword, strike, parry, repose, that kind of thing, you would have the kind of talent level within, say, several game sessions that would take someone in the real world years to practice. Obviously, that's not something that is realistic today. And I mean, hey, who knows? In the future, that may be exactly how people train their own skills. Wouldn't that be a cool idea, right? But I digress. With the current technology that we have, talking about transferable skills, I wonder if for some of the games, how much do we take out of it with us when we go about our lives in the physical world? So, obviously, if you're playing a game that is in a fantasy setting and you're practicing magic, you're not suddenly going to go to your job the next day and start casting fireballs or, you know, levitating stuff with your mind. If you do, take a video of that, put it on YouTube, it would be the most amazing thing ever. And I'm talking about real stuff, none, none of this, like, smoke and mirrors, illusion, illusionist, I was about to say illusion magic, and reference Chris Angel. It's like, I don't think he's a magician, but then again, I can't disprove that he's not. And again, that's going off topic, but I do that a lot. But the application of what you do in the game and applying it to real life. And on a very surface level, the easiest one that I think I could apply would probably be organizational skills. So correlating different things to different places, organizing things into different groups. And if you've ever done any kind of resource management game or uh, <laughs> one of my favorite games, Harvest Moon, or an RPG where you're just sort of uh, putting all of your different items into different spots and then stacking them, things like that. That's a very basic application of the kind of tasks you do in a game that you could apply to real life in an almost identical kind of way, just stacking, sorting, organizing, and labeling 
which is very mundane and boring, but you know, it's it's a very it's a very simple thought application of what you learn within a game. What I'm more curious about is for games where conversation is a big part of the experience, can you take some of those interactions and use them as a testing floor for real life interaction? For example, let's say you're somebody who maybe maybe you've got a lot of anxiety. Maybe maybe you lack confidence, maybe a combination of both. You just don't handle yourself that well in a real world scenario where you're socializing with another person. Could it be that playing games that have a huge social aspect to them help with that kind of situation in Playing that kind of game, maybe not repeatedly, but playing that kind of game consistently, subconsciously, or even consciously, allow you to be more comfortable in the real world application. I'm probably, mm, I feel like people have probably done a study on this before. So after I'm done this, I'm going to have to look it up and maybe touch base on this again at another time. But you know what I mean? I wonder if there's a way to kind of, uh, trying to think of the word it's on the tip of my tongue ah if there's a way to kind of use the interactive engaging immersive experience of a game and apply that to problems within the real world as a kind of interactive therapy to improve things like that for example like being able to socialize being confident and comfortable in a face-to-face interaction and then (laughs) maybe way down the road, apply it even further like Awaken Online into a sort of uh, scenario where it's like, okay, obviously we can't show you how to do task A because it's way too dangerous in a real world setting, or we don't have the resources to physically allow you to practice this. But we can give you a very base level understanding and um, opportunity to practice that skill in this virtual environment with no consequences of maybe losing a finger or setting yourself on fire. I have no idea what this task is, which is why I said task A, but obviously it's something that involves sharp objects and a lot of heat, maybe glass blowing. I don't know, but I think you get where I'm coming from with this. Anyway, as always, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this, uh, on this idea Because I really do think, I mean, I know it's used in some ways already, but I'm wondering if it couldn't be applied even more in the future, I'd say, when technology allows for it to be more immersive and less of an abstract thing where you're using a controller, where you're physically in the environment yourself, well, in a virtual way, if that could be used to improve skills or, again, act as a sort of social interactive therapy for people who otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to improve an interesting thought at the very least so yeah if you got any thoughts to share on that i'd be interested to hear what you got to say anyways as always my name's rye you take care of yourselves